Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand for our processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather at this altar of God, and indeed cry holy, as we call out to him. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Nick Anderchuk, Dennis and David Moniz, Leslie Elsie Lass, and for Ed Luchow. Gathering our prayers into one, let us recognize our sinfulness before our God and turn to him for mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at God's right hand. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. 
my desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. to the words of your son. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. To the Gospel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. This weekend, scriptures that the church invites us to reflect upon are full of very powerful one-liners. Are you envious because I am generous? Are you envious because I am generous? St. Paul in the second reading says, Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Live your life in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. And in Isaiah's first reading, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, says the Lord.
beautiful, beautiful passages to reflect upon. God's ways are higher than our ways. Yet how often do you and I think that we know more? And we question God. And we say, God, where are you? As if God would ever leave us. And so as last week talked about forgiveness, as we continue to unpack the Lord's Prayer, last week was, forgive us as we forgive others. This week we reflect on the words, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's ways are beyond our ways. Why do we think we know more than God? Why do we believe that our plans are better than his plans? How many of us, after going through a particular situation, in the moment feel and question, but only afterwards we come to realize, ah, that's why. This is true of parenting. Kids have no clue what's going on. Why are you disciplining? Why are you creating rules? And then when they become parents, the light bulb goes on. How many times do we go through experiences and question God only to realize that God had better plans than we could ever imagine? For my ways are higher than your ways. Raise your hand if you enjoy being around joyful people. One more time. Raise your hand if you enjoy being around joyful people. It's my joy when I have to repeat. <laughs> Friends at home, I can see you even though I can't see you. We all enjoy being around joyful people. Joy is contagious, isn't it? When I'm around someone who's joyful, even when I'm down, they seem to lift me up. Raise your hand if you like being around negative people. Friends at home, I don't see any hands here. Any at home? Well, my hand goes up, because I actually enjoy being around negative people. I make it my life mission to change them. Especially when I met someone for the first time and I see they're a negative Nancy. Nancy's out there. I'm not talking about you in particular. It's just a figure of speech, right? You know these people. How are you? Well, the weather's changing to the fall. Summer's over. Oh, COVID. Yeah, welcome to reality. The rest of us are dealing with the same thing. Beautiful. The seasons are changing. Thank God we're at stage three. God is going to see us through it, always turning the negative to a positive. Negativity is also contagious, isn't it? When you're around people who are negative, all of a sudden your joy gets diminished. I just got promoted. Yeah, well, I've been working at the same job for 30 years. Nobody's promoted me. Th th thanks. Thanks for being happy for me. Right? It, just, it just kills just kills the joy. And yet how many of us kill joy? We look around, we compare ourselves to others, and how easy it is to su suggest that the grass is greener. That God is blessing someone else more than he blesses me. Are you envious because I am generous, says the Lord? How about the people who are not at church today? Whose lives seem to be much easier than ours? Who seem to have no problems in the world? And you think, well, why bother? The grass is greener on their side. Oh, is it? How are we judging the grass and its greenliness, if that makes sense? <laughs> right? How are we actually looking at the world? Is it about comparisons? What is Jesus talking about in today's gospel? 
Is this not about eternal life? Is Jesus not promising all people the gift of eternal life? Does he not give us rewards that, as the Book of Wisdom says, I has not seen, nor has ear heard what God has ready for those who love him? Do we believe this? Are we willing to, as St. Paul tells us, live a life that is in a manner of the gospel of Christ? Or do we settle for lower standards? Because here I am as a faithful follower, and God took my spouse at a young age. I'm faithful to my spouse, my spouse is cheating on me. I raise my kids properly, they're addicted to drugs, alcohol, etc. And the laundry list can be long. And we think, why is God punishing me? This family seems to be a disaster, and yet they seem to be living a wonderful life. Is that what it's all about? What about those who come to faith later in life? Next week, we're going to be starting the RCIA program for those who have perhaps not been raised in faith or perhaps know very little about Jesus Christ. Could someone like Hitler be given the gift of eternal life if true compassion was between him and God and a true conversion of heart took place? Could a rapist, a serial killer, whoever you and I might think as these evil bad people, could they not too have a change of heart and be given the gift of eternal life? Are you envious because I am generous? It's not up to us, my dear people of God, who goes to heaven. You and I are not the bouncers of the kingdom. Thank God we're not. Because would we let anyone in? Are you envious because I am generous? My ways are so far beyond your ways. You judge them, I know them, says the Lord. You think you know someone, but you don't know what it's like, where they've come from, and where I'm bringing them, says the Lord. The abundance of the generosity of God my dear people, is what sustains us to live a life that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. That's why I stay in a marriage when I feel like I'm the only one working at it. That's why I continue to love my children even though they disrespect me over and over. That's why I continue to live as a faithful employee even though I'm taken advantage of at work. That's why I continue to be positive and to see the many blessings in the life that God has blessed me with, rather than being negative. Because I'm investing in something that lasts forever. I'm investing in what is truly important. I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ no matter the cost. Because I know what the reward is. At least we think we know what the reward is. Heaven is so beyond anything we could ever imagine. And yet, so few of us make decisions today that will impact eternal life. In fact, it's the opposite. What's in it for me now? I want the payment now. And God never promised payment now, did he? If you want to be my disciple, you are to take up your cross and follow me. And then to trust that staying in the trenches, in the midst of a messy, dirty life, that at times can seem dysfunctional and without purpose, God says, you are important to me, and I love you. Trust me in this situation. If God has brought us to a situation, he will see us through the situation. But we need to trust him. And we need to stop comparing ourselves to others. I work harder. I'm holier. I deserve. Let's let God be God and let us be us. And say, Lord, thank you for all you bless me with. Lord, sustain me in all that I do. Lord, may my will be conformed to your will for me. 
And I look forward to the day, whether it's today or 100 years from now, when you will call me home to yourself. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For whatever doesn't break us makes us stronger. And how many of us have been blessed by God with people who have overcome much, who have all the excuses in the world to be negative, but are joyful, that inspire us, that encourage us to enter into something bigger, something greater than I, something divine something eternal. And so, friends, the Lord Jesus asks each of us this question right here, right now. Are you envious because I am generous? What is our answer? longing for the coming of the kingdom, a kingdom that Jesus professes and proclaims for us to trust in him, the eternal rewards that come from a life that is pleasing to the gospel of Christ. Let us profess our faith in this triune God who can never be outdone in his abundance, as we say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Encouraged by the good news that Jesus gives us, the Lord is close to all who call upon him. We place our needs before our Heavenly Father with that same hope in our hearts. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father and all those entrusted with the responsibility of preaching God's word. Give them the strength to proclaim the truth joyfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that as a community we may open our minds and hearts to the needs of others and so lead joyous and generous lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the planet's resources will not be plundered, but shared in a just and respectful manner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, especially Jerome D'Souza, Stephen Stewart, Sky Sarito, Peggy Fougere, Tony Petrovich, Alan McCarter, Sylvia Martin, Tanina Materno, Deborah Celeste, and Ronald Ryan, May they be comforted by the compassion and understanding of their family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Kathleen Salmon, Shirley Durward, 
Marie Herdlika, Regina Celli, John Gilbert, Anne Daly, Evelyn Heidacker, Edith Todd, Ed Lucho, Karen Wildfang, and Carol Campman. Touch them with your love and bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the repose of the souls of Nick Andrichuk, Dennis and David Moniz, and Elsie Les, and Ed Luchow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, and for all the intentions we hold within the silence of our hearts. Heavenly Father, look with compassion on our failings. Deliver us from hardness of heart and help us to be more generous as you are abundantly generous to us. Grant that we may be always ready to forgive injuries and bring healing to divisions. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. 
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of your Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. this Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus mercy. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family which you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
We remember especially Nick and Dennis, David and Elsie, Ed and all who have died. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home who will receive Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 
for those here in the church who are preparing to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, for those returning to Mass and those who continue to struggle with how to come to Communion, I invite you to pay attention and look at Father Rico, please. Please wait till the ushers have escorted you to the side aisles. Make sure that you are respecting distance from your fellow parishioners, which means stand on the stickers that are there on the floor. As you approach Father Bill and I, please ensure that your mask is covering your face as you approach us to maintain our health too. We will say the body of Christ. You say amen after you've said amen, only after you've said amen. Carefully remove half of your mask and present your hands as altar hands for Jesus so that Father Bill and I can place Jesus on the palm of your hand as you reverently prepare your heart to receive him in Holy Communion. Then you make the sign of the cross, place the mask in front of your face, and then use the side aisles for these sections and the center aisle for these sections. That way we can continue to be distant. So these sections, side aisles, these sections, center aisle. Thank you.
I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities. But deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As was mentioned last week, our tabernacle was taken from our cathedral, and so our bishop is asking that we spend this next month in prayer of reparation for the desecration of the Blessed Sacrament, and so I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. O Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you profoundly. We offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences by which he is offended. By the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we beg the conversion of poor sinners. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, a few announcements. Number one is the big yellow sign is in front of our church. This week we begin two of our most important adult faith formations. The yellow sign is talking about the RCIA program, 
which is the acronym for the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. For those family members who join the Catholic family members every week at Mass, what a beautiful opportunity for you to delve deeper in faith, coming to know what we believe and most importantly, why we believe. Many of you Catholics who've been cradle Catholics your whole life know very few of the whys. What a beautiful opportunity for you to enter into our CIA as well as we begin to teach you that our faith is not a bunch of rules, but rather a deep relationship with a God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how his teachings penetrate our very lives and shape who we are. So this is a great tool for you, friends, to go into your families and neighborhoods, places of work, to encourage them and come with them. Say, we have an awesome program I want you to participate in. Come to know what I believe and join us on Wednesday evenings from 7 to 8.30 in our parish hall. For those who feel they know the wise, Alpha begins on Thursday evening. We will be doing this on Zoom, as I showed you the video last week. Jody has been taking registrations. Remember that by the end of this, every parishioner is going to be asked to go through Alpha. This is too important not to. So pick the session that works for you. If you wish to join us beginning this Thursday, then please contact the parish office and Jody will enroll you promises to be a very deeply moving and spiritually changing experience. We look forward to how the Holy Spirit continues to enhance, which of course builds on our Tuesday night Bible study as we are now in the book of the prophet Daniel. So friends, my job is to lead you to water. It's your job to drink. Heaven is at stake. Let us deepen our relationship with the Lord Jesus. And finally, as I put in my update, our income level is down 40% since the pandemic. Many of you who are returning to Mass, we welcome you with open arms, and the bills continue to pile up. Many of you give $5 and less in your offertory every week, but have very lucrative jobs and live in large homes. Are we living the Catholic tithe, many of which will spend more on a latte today than we give to God? We will spend more on our tip for our lunch or dinner than we give to God. And so I prayerfully ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, the 10% tithe of time, talent, and treasure, which is a very Catholic thing given to us by Almighty God, and invite you to take more time to realize how we are to give to God what is His. Because in building the kingdom of God here at St. Joseph, we rely on those funds to build the kingdom. And we continue to offer this parish so many things that without those funds, we will have to scale them back. And of course, as we are building, we want to continue to build the kingdom. And I thank those who give up generously of their hearts. The Lord knows who you are, so do I. Thank you for continuing to support our parish. And I invite the rest of us, especially those who are at home. The costs here are significant, even though you're at home, just like your mortgage and your bills continue. So I invite you to be generous with Jesus, who is so, so generous to us. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. i
Oh, 